the road to a state championship. Jefferson City's basketball season to remember began here on the practice court inside the Marvin Fleming Fieldhouse. Head coach Jim Byland returned an overachieving team that one year ago came just one win away from the Show Me Showdown. What was to follow the most remarkable high school basketball season in Missouri, the most memorable in the history of Jefferson City? You know, last year we came into it with the fact we only had two seniors that, that were going to play much for us, and this year uh, we, we've only got to replace those two guys. So we've got some kids that got to play a little earlier than we thought that they would, so we've got more varsity experience than any time in recent years, and that usually means you're going to be a little more stable, and, and hopefully our level of play will be somewhat better early in the year because last year we paid the price time and time again for lack of experience. Scheduling the usual late season opener, the Jays traveled to Springfield, a Missouri hotbed for basketball, beginning the season against Hillcrest. Jefferson City burned the Nets, hitting 60% from the field. Senior Torrey Griffin led the way with 18 points. The Jays hammered Hillcrest by 16, a 72-56 win to open the season. One week later, J.C. battled the Bruins at Columbia Rockbridge. This was no contest. The Jays outscored the bridge in every quarter. Junior center Monty Hard scoring 18 points in 18 minutes of action, including this big jam. Jefferson City moved to 2-0 on the year, waving bye-bye to the Bruins. December 12th marked Jefferson City's home opener. The Jays hosting Illinois State Power Quincy High. Jim Byland's club jumped on top 34-27 at the half. Harge hitting 9 of 10 shots from the field, finishing the game with 26. But Quincy rallied back to send it to overtime. The Jays fell short, 71 to 68. J.C. got right back on the winning track the following weekend. The Jaybirds man handled Melville, a 26-point win. Rich Abishan had 14, Harge and Torrey Griffin with 15 apiece. The Jays moved to 3-1 on the young season. After adding a fourth victory the next night in Lee Summit, a 61-60 thriller, the Jays traveled to Columbia Hickman. After falling behind early, Byland's boys battled back, taking a two-point lead at intermission. Brian Center with a hustling steal and breakaway. Four Jays hit double figures as Jefferson City rocked rival Hickman 64-55. That was only the beginning of the Jays' domination over the Cubes. The second annual Holiday Classic opened on December 28th. Host Jefferson City jolted Joplin in the first round. A close game throughout. Harge with a 26-point effort and 12 rebounds led the way. J.C. a 51-44 winner over Joplin. The Jays moving to 6-1 on the season. We'd like we told the team the difference this year and last year is last year we lost, this year we won. And we got a much better feeling about ourselves coming down the stretch. We didn't especially finish well tonight from a standpoint we missed some free throws, but we took care of the basketball. We defended really well and we rebounded well again. So all in all, we're where we want to be, even though it could have been prettier. The holiday tournament semifinals match Jefferson City against South Laurel County from Kentucky. Telly Griffin's bucket put the Jays on top by one at the half. But the out-of-state visitors went on to a three-point victory, 57 to 54. That sent the Jays into the consolation game against the Hickman Cupies. The rivalry rekindled for a second time in 10 days. This was jam time for Monty. A one, a two, a three. Harge and the Jays slammed past the Cupies, 72-66 ending 1992 at 7-2. Well, it was a great game. It's too bad somebody had to lose. Hickman played all really well, deserved to win. We, we hit a good stride down the stretch, and uh, we feel very fortunate. That was a very good Hickman team we beat tonight. After opening the new year with consecutive losses at Blue Springs and Vashon, the Jaybirds took part in the Lee Summit Tournament, opening with Shawnee Mission South. Jay Bylan broke out with a 14-point effort, three of three from three, J.C. shot past Shawnee Mission, 65 to 59. Then a heartbreaker in second round tournament play. Jeff City taking on host Lee Summit. A low scoring defensive struggle. The Jays lost by one point, 42-41. J.C. falling to eight and five, but a winning streak was about to begin. 
The Jays finished out the Lee Summit Tournament on January 23rd, seeking revenge against Blue Springs, and what a wild finish this was. Tied 46-46 after regulation, the two teams played to a 48-all tie after one overtime, then trading buckets again in the second OT, it was 50-50. But a third overtime was all Jefferson City. Monty Harge leading the way with a game-high 24 as the Jays jolted the Wildcats in triple overtime, 61-53. And finally, the Jaybirds would find their way home for the first time in 1993. January 26th, J.C. played host to the Bulldogs of Mexico. The home cooking was tasting good early. The Jays feasted to a 38-20 halftime lead. Telly Griffin had a dozen in the game, including this bucket and fall. Jay Byland also reached double figures with 11. Monty had 17. The Jays cruising to a 67-57 win, now 10-5 on the season. Next, one of the big highlights of the regular season, a standing room only crowd jammed into the new Halias Fieldhouse for the annual Capital City Clash. High school basketball at its best. These teams traded three-pointers early, Jay Byland scoring six and dished out six assists as the Jaybirds trailed by three at halftime by four at the end of the third quarter, but led by Rich Abishan's 13 points, the Jays would dominate the final minutes en route to a 53-48 victory and the bragging rights along with it. Well, we lost a lot of these last year. In fact, this game last year we lost where Elias made the spurt down the stretch tonight. It was our turn. We, we made some free throws down the stretch after we left the door open. So it uh, feels, uh, feels good to win. Great environment for basketball. Great for the city of Jefferson City. No matter who won, everybody conducted themselves in a fine manner. Cheered for their teams. Just a great tribute to high school basketball. Following the emotional win over Helias, the Jays didn't lose focus. One night later, hosting Jackson in a defensive struggle, the JCD giving up only 36 points, the Jaybirds scrapped their way to a 10-point win. Jamal Horton had 11, Marty Harge with 14, a fifth straight win, and the Jays were 12 and five. Following a forgettable loss at DeSmet, the Jays returned to the victory circle at Parkway West. A big game for Brian Center. The J.C. guard popped in 12 points. Jamal Horton added 13 as the Jays eased on to a big 61-47 win. Now 13-6 on the season. February 12th, back home, Jefferson City Hickman take three. The good guys had already won the first two. A great high school battle. Horton going in for the jam, but the Jaybirds would still trail by eight at halftime. A big fourth quarter comeback rallied the Jays back into a tie. This center free throw sent the game to overtime, all knotted up at 51 apiece. Solid board play by the Jays. Torrey Griffin follows in two of his game high 14, along with Harge's 14. In overtime, the Jays made it three in a row over the QPs. How sweet it is. The following weekend, Jefferson City played host to the Tigers of Sedalia Smith-Cotton. Senior Torrey Griffin hit 8 of 12 from the field, leading the way with 19 points. Center on the assist here, chipped in with 16. The Jaybirds sock Sedalia 66 to 51, moving to 15 and 6 on the year. After a loss at Kansas City Rockhurst, back home to the Fleming Fieldhouse, Jim Byland's defensive domination returned. The Jays holding Rolla to just 13 points in the first half. Arge hit for 16 with 13 boards. Torrey Griffin also with a double-double, 11 points and 11 rebounds. The Jays buried the bumbling Bulldogs of Rolla 54-30. Then a return match with the Vashon Wolverines. The Jays would stay close early. Harge with the power jam for two of his 19. Even Jay Byland wanted to play big man underneath. But the Jays came up short. Vashon won by 11, 53 to 42, dropping the Jays to 16 and eight, heading into district play. Thanks to the good friends in Columbia, the district attorney was transferred from Jefferson City to Rockbridge. It was supposed to help the Columbia schools. 
nothing would help the Bruins in the postseason opener. Jefferson City holding the bridge scoreless until midway through the second quarter. Meanwhile, Jamal Horton went wild. 23 points, hitting everything in sight. The Jays rolled past Rockbridge with ease, 51 to 37. That would set up the district championship, Jays QPs part four. The hammering of Hickman would continue. Jefferson City controlled from the start. Hickman closed the gap in the fourth quarter, but the Jaybirds hung on for another district title, 71-62 the final, make it four for four against Hickman. Two sectional action, the Jefferson City Jays would travel to Washington High, battling St. Charles West, a team the football Jays had blown out last fall. Similar results on the hardwood. Four players in double figures, Torrey Griffin leading the way with 20, along with 20 rebounds. Harge had 14, two with the power slam here. Bylan chipped in with 14, three of three from three. And Rich Abishon added a dozen. The Jays rolled on to a 70 to 55 win over St. Charles West, heading to Sedalia for the state quarterfinals. At the State Fair Exhibition Center, the Elite Eight battle matched the Jays in Springfield Central. And the Jays led from start to finish. Monty with 26 man handling Central. Torrey Griffin had 17. Abishan 15. The Jays clinched a Final Four berth with an 81 to 70 victory. Columbia Hearn Center, here we come. At 20 and eight, the Jays prepared for their toughest challenge in a season filled with ranked opponents. Up next, top ranked DeSoto, who'd lost only once in 29 games. I don't put much stock in them that much because, you know, if you read the papers, you're gonna start thinking, well, maybe you don't deserve to be in the top 10, but you know, here we don't try not to look at it. We try to, you know, go on what we think, and we think we're a top 10 team, and we're, we're hopefully proving it right now by being the last four in class 4A. We're going to need to stay focused the whole game and just work hard basically on defense and knock down our shots and I think we'll be okay. They shot like 303, made 300 threes this year already and they're a really good three point shooting team. So in order for us to beat them, we're going to have to, you know, defend the three, you know, contain them and rebound. Well, I, I hear they're going to push, push it at us and, you know, work, work it hard on, on running down the court, but, uh, you know, we got some big size in there. They match up pretty good with their postman. So, muscle it up. To be the best, you have to play the best. Jays coach Jim Bylan's basketball creed. And today, the Jaybirds took flight against the state's number one team. Big Monty Harge dominated the DeSoto Dragons in the early going. Torrey Griffin also sparked the Jefferson City inside game that had carried the unranked Jays to the Final Four. After an inspiring first half, the Jaybirds came back onto the court, up by six points over the top-ranked DeSoto Dragons, one half away from a possible state finals berth. No letdown in the third quarter. Harge to Jamal Horton, the senior guard with 14 points. Fellow senior Griffin with 21, including the breakaway jam. The Jays led by a dozen in the fourth quarter, but DeSoto fought back a one dragon show. Number 44, Brandon Kloss, hit three after three after three. Kloss with an unbelievable 48 points, including 11 trays. Three times drawing the Dragons to within two points. But hitting free throws down the stretch, the Jays hung on to down DeSoto 73 to 71. We did some crazy things down the end, but we did some good things too. Good things happen to good winners. So. Uh, this is what I've been. This is what we worked for at the beginning of the year. This is this is what it's all about. We're not satisfied with just um, coming to the Final Four and making it to the championship game. You know that that wasn't our goal. Our goal was to win the state championship, and that's what we're not going to be satisfied until we do that. One victory away, the Cinderella Jays go for the glass slipper tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon. Saturday, March 20th, 1993. Jefferson City versus Poplar Bluff for Missouri's 4A Basketball Championship. A game played in front of a huge Hearn Center crowd and a statewide television audience. Jefferson City High School history was about to be made. 
Although the Jays fell behind by 11 midway through the second quarter, Tory Griffin helped to pull J.C. back to within four by halftime. Jim Byland's club came out firing in the second half. Brian Center's three-pointer put the Jays up 33-32. to Once again, Poplar Bluff regained the lead, but just as Jeff City had won most of its games this season, the Jays rallied back in the fourth quarter. Monty Hart scored on this tip-in to make it 53-50 Jays with two and a half minutes left. Then the clincher came off a hard block leading to Torrey Griffin's follow-up. The Jays were up by eight points with 32 seconds left. Although Poplar Bluff made it close, the Jays were set to win it all. Listen to me. If we don't foul, you cannot lose this game. And Stacy Nolan gets the rebound. Starts back. Two seconds left. Half court shot is no good. Buzzer sounds. Jays win. It's a state championship for the Jefferson City Jays. And the Jefferson City Jays have captured their first ever state basketball championship. First thing I want to do is, is congratulate our team. They certainly hung together in all of the, the good times and the bad times and played as one. And uh, just every time we gave a challenge, they met it. And they, they came up big numbers here today. And the, the people that came in to support us, they, every year they come watch us play wherever we go and whatever we do. And we're just uh, awfully glad for them as well. Time we finally bought a basketball championship, something that's never, ever been done at Jeff City. And we wanted to make sure me, Jamal, Torrey, and Jason Anthony, we wanted to leave our mark with a banner up on there, but it's, it's the whole team, not just the seniors. It's amazing. I mean, the first thing I did, I went over and gave my dad a big kiss on the lips. I never kissed him, I, I don't think, in my whole life, but I don't think I want to again, you know, but. Well, it was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. it was, oh, yeah, it was a, it's not a, a one-man thing. You know, before each game, all season, we've been saying one. It takes all of us to do it, and that's what happened tonight. Every one of us. <laughs> it's awesome. I, I can't tell you how it feels. We put so much work into this, and. It, I can't tell you we've we played together so much. It, it just it just feels great. No, we stuck together through the good times and bad times when we got there. Like here we are, it's great. All right, Brian, how does it feel? <laughs> how does that water feel? <laughs> it feels great. Worth you know, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's lot, worth it. <laughs> yeah, as a senior, um, that that is the best way to go out, winning a state championship. I can go back all the last. The, the last three months of hard work, weightlifting and running, you know, this is just a big payoff for everything. It's a grand prize, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's the greatest feeling in the world right now because <clears throat> the three or the four or five seniors that we had on the team, that's all we were thinking about at the beginning of the year through weightlifting and running and everything. We said it'd be great to win the state. This is our last year and everything. I kind of, uh, I saw it coming, I think. Their defense is, is, is really picked. <laughs> Their defense is really, uh, uh, brought him through. Yeah. Yeah. So you go out as a state champion. That's right. Proud of too. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's nothing like being a state champion. Um, you, it's not a feeling that you never forget being a state champion. Uh, it's great. I mean, what more could you ask for? Um, first time in JC history that this has ever happened, and I'm I'm glad I'm a part of it. Just I had it in my. I just couldn't, you know, let go. You know, just cheering for all my friends. You know, and just. I just knew that we couldn't leave here without being number one. I just knew we couldn't, and we did it, and we're number one. My admiration, appreciation to the coaches, all the guys in this room. Great effort all year. Came up big, and we had to come up big tonight. And we always say we win as a team, we lose as a team. Different people have different roles in different games. Really, there were lots of times when maybe I doubted you, and you guys never doubted yourselves. You hung in through the good times and the bad times. Never would quit. Never would stay down very long. Got each other up. Did all of the things that we talked about. The ball is tipped. There you are. You're running for your life. A shooting star in all the years. No one knows just how hard you worked, but now it shows. In one shining moment, you reach deep inside. One shining moment, you knew you were alive. You Heart, the wind in your face, it's more than a contest, it's more than a race. 
Shine.